Welcome back to the Anna Grant Economics and today we are actually starting a new topic and that goes by the name market structures. Today we are starting to look at the first one, the best one, the one with the most optimal outcome and that is perfect competition. Today we're going to take a look at some of the key things that allow us to understand not just perfect competition but all market structures. We're going to take a look at the characteristics of perfect competition some of the curves or most of the curves that describe this market structure as well as discuss some of the points that may come up for examinations. All of that today. That's like a fight. <laughs> so first things first, in order to understand market structure, you actually do need to know at least three specific things, two of which I think are extremely important. One thing you need to know is what is productive optimum? Productive optimum literally is when a firm produces at the lowest point of the average cost curve. And if you didn't know, marginal cost cuts average cost at its lowest point. And this is very like scientific. Just think about it. Let's just say if I add somebody to a, a room, they are five feet tall. The marginal is five, the average is five, because only one person there. When I add someone else, let's just say they are eight feet, they, they are eight feet tall. Like that means the marginal change or the change in height in the classroom is eight. The average was five. Now, because marginal is greater than average in this case, it means that the overall average is going to increase. And you might want to pull that back and think about it again. If I add a person who is just one foot tall to the classroom after this person, the marginal is now, well, one. And because the marginal is lower than the last average we established, the average comes down. So you can say that average sort of follows marginal cost like a like a tail follows its kite and because of that you'd find that marginal will cut AC at its lowest point. You need to know that. The next thing you need to know is the fact that profit max is given where your marginal cost curve cuts your marginal revenue curve. That's extremely important. That allows us to know what quantity the firm is going to produce in order to maximize their profit and it really unfolds everything after that. So keep that in mind as well. The last thing which I think is almost a by the way is that price, when price is equal to marginal cost, it, it implies there is allocative efficiency. Because you see, price tells us the amount people are willing to pay for something, the cost. And of course, if they're willing to pay for something and it's equal to the marginal cost of it, it tells us the perceived benefit that they get is equal to exactly what they're going to pay for the additional good. Because they wouldn't be willing to pay for anything they're not benefiting from it. You're not going to pay more for something and it's going to benefit Yo. you less. This is Daniel Grant of the Winning Grant channel here and thank you for watching the video. What I want to ask is that you like and subscribe because it does help the content reach other persons who could benefit from the content the same way you are benefiting now, all right? Feel free to share the video with some of your classmates who may be having a hard time with some of the topics we are discussing here as well. Also, if you're looking for classes, I do have classes available for Unit 1 Economics and you need to keep economics. If you're interested, just message me at the number below so we could discuss how you could possibly join that class. Otherwise, enjoy the content, have a good one. So P equal MC gives us an idea or it is equal to allocative efficiency, but I don't know by the way point. So with that in mind, let's start to talk about perfect competition specific. First area we're gonna delve into regarding perfect competition is its characteristics, all right? It's important to know that perfect competition within the market structure topic lies on one extreme, right? So we're gonna be looking at what we call the ideal circumstance first. So the first characteristic we want to keep in mind whenever you hear about perfect competition is that there are many buyers and many sellers. That's one. The second one is there are no barriers to entry for this market. People could simply enter to sell goods and exit when they want with ease. All right. Thirdly, every good that is sold in a perfect competition is perfectly homogenous. Perfectly. No difference. Size, shape, taste, smell, everything is literally the same. Next characteristic, the fourth one, is the fact that there is perfect knowledge. What I even mean, what kind of brainy acting is that? It means that every participant, all the economic agents, both buyers and sellers, know everything going on in the market. So let's just say a man in oysters trying to sell uh, a fish and fry for like 20 Bajan. Somebody wants to knows that. 
So they wouldn't pay anything more because they know the price and all these things. Like if there's a sale going on, you automatically you know it. Everyone knows every little thing that's occurring in the market. So they can take advantage of any little price fluctuations and avoid being, let's say, paying over or selling under price. It's, it's perfect knowledge, which that point is highly theoretical, by the way. So you need to know that one. Lastly, the fifth thing we want to mention, in fact, this is not a, a market structure point, but it needs to be mentioned. Every firm in the perfect competition industry is going to contribute a small amount, and that small amount goes into making up the market output, the market supply curve. There are so much of us that we each contribute a small fraction of what the total market provides to the industry itself, all right? And those are the characteristics you actually need to know. After speaking about characteristics, we need to discuss some of the implications because these things just don't, we see it and we move on. It has an impact on the market itself, right? And what you need to know is that if there are many buyers and many sellers, it means automatically that no one buyer dominates the market or no one seller dominates the market. If you choose to charge a higher price, you sell no goods because everybody's going to purchase the cheaper identical good. It, it literally makes no sense for you to do that. Which means that firms in a perfectly competitive industries are literally called price takers. They have no control over what price they can charge for the good. In fact, the price of the good is determined by the interaction of the market demand and supply curve. That's what you need to know. And that's an implication here. First things first, when it comes to the diagram for perfect competition, you need to know that the, the main line, I call it the everything is equal to everything line. Because what you're going to have is a perfectly elastic line going across the axes. And this represents not just your AR curve, but it also represents your marginal revenue. It also represents your price and it also represents your demand curve. Because think about it. If you're selling something for $5, if I've sold one, the average revenue there is five, the marginal revenue is five. If I've sold two, well, I've made $10 and I've sold two. So the average revenue there is still five. And the marginal revenue from selling an additional good. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. It's five. And you're going to realize that this five dollars is repeating all the time because that's the price I'm charging for each good. Which means that at five dollars, I could potentially sell zero or a thousand, which is why, again, you have this flat line going across there. And because of the fact that that gives you the relationship between price and quantity demanded, it also makes up your demand good. What's important to pay attention to next is the presence of your MC curve and the presence of your AC curve, average cost curve. It's important to note that MC does cut AC at its lowest point. And it's also important to know that MC cuts MR at profit max. The key things that we wanted to mention in the first part of this video. You see, knowing what profit max is, allows us to find the quantity at which the firm is going to maximize their profit. This is the quantity they will produce. And note, this is the same among all market structures. Firms produce where they are maximizing profit. Of course, we look at this quantity and we ask ourselves, well, hey, if I'm going to produce this amount, what is going to be the revenue I'm going to make? So we look at this amount and we're going to ask ourselves, what is the price that I'm going to charge when I'm producing this quantity. And only one line gives you a relationship between price and quantity demanded. And that is your demand curve. So you need to look at where this quantity line is touching your demand curve. And then you could interpolate it across to this axis to get your price. That allows you to determine the quantity using MC cutting MR. And that, when it touches the demand curve, allows us to determine the price that good is going to sell for. Now we ask the next question. When I'm producing this amount, what is going to be the cost I have to pay to make this? Well, one curve gives you the relationship between the quantity you're producing and the cost you're going to pay for that. And that is your average cost curve. Where does your profit maximization quantity line touch your average cost curve? Right here as well. Which means, and I'll go green here once more, for this specific diagram, you are going to have zero profit being made. Why? Because the area of revenue, which is given by price by quantity, is equal to the area of the cost. The area of, I'm going to say total cost and total revenue. The area of total cost 
is given by the cross multiplied by the quantity. And remember, the quantity we got was given by the point where MC cuts your MR curve. That's, that's it basically. That allows us to use these same guiding principle to determine almost anything. Now, perfect competition is quite unique because there are three possible cases for an outcome in the short run. So in this particular diagram, you can see no profit being made, right? But let's consider something else. Follow me along. In this diagram, we're going to portray a profit being made. A profit being made. So we have the same curves, AR is equal to MR, equal to price, which is equal to demand, and we have your MC curve. Consider if the firm in this case had an average cost curve that was a bit lower. Let's say the average cost curve is, is like this. A C curve. Now we're gonna implement and use the same guiding principles that we had. The first thing we want to ask ourselves is where is profit maximizing quantity here? Where MC cuts MR. That is given by this yellow point right here and allows us to determine the quantity that would maximize this business's profit same guiding principles here. Now we want to see where that profit line cuts our demand curve to determine the price we're going to get for that quantity. As you can see from this diagram, that simply maps to the same five. We're taking it right in. Now the next question is, if I know what price I'm going to get, I want to ask myself, what is the cost I'm going to pay for making this amount? And with that, I'm going to look to where this line cuts my AC curve. It cuts your AC curve right here, which means what is the cost you're going to pay for that? As you say, this is four. Now, revenue is given by price by quantity. The price by quantity in this case is, and let me just put a random, let's put 12, right? Five by 12, that will give you 60. Cost, total cost is given by, total cost is given by the cost which is 4 by the quantity. 4 by 12 is 48. So profit would be the total revenue minus the total cost, which would give you 12. The area that, that describes the total cost you're going to pay is 4 by the 4 by 12 zone. However, the area that connotates your revenue is the 5 by 12 zone, which means the area that really maps to the profit is the excess. That's this zone here. The area that goes beyond your cost. This is what we see when we have a profit being made in the short run when it comes to perfect competition. Last but not least, we have our loss. So loss could only be made where your total cost is greater than your total revenue, right? If you just think about it. So consider in this case, a firm that has a average cost curve that's a bit higher than the rest that we would have shown earlier, right? We start off with the same guiding principles. What is the profit maximizing quantity? MC is going to cut MR right here. And I want to know, well, what is the price I'm going to get for this quantity of goods I'm going to sell? Well, that would be where this quantity line touches your demand curve. Right here, we interpolate, it maps to five. Good going. So let's just put an arbitrary thing here and put 10 as a profit max quantity. So I have a state where my total revenue is going to be five by 10. TR is equal to five by 10, which is gonna be 50. Then I ask myself, well, what is the total cost? When I make 10 goods, what is the cost do I have to, what's the cost I have to pay to get those goods? And of course, I'm gonna to look to where this quantity line touches my average cost curve, which is right here. I map this across, interpolating, let's just say it's seven. Seven, so which means my total cost is equal to seven by 10, which is equal to 70. So what is profit in this case? Or what is the, what is the outcome? It's going to be your total revenue minus your total cost. 50 minus 70 gives you minus 20. In economics, we call that a loss. So we've, we've moved the average cost curve from a place where it was tangential to your demand curve, your average revenue curve, your marginal revenue curve, if you want to call it whatever, and we've moved it lower and above to show three different outcomes, profit, loss, and zero profit. 
right? Abnormal profit is also called supernormal profit as well, according to what source material you're reading. So keep that in mind. And that's how you show the different states when it comes to perfect competition. Now, let's discuss some of the finer details that you could overlook. These are some of the finer details of perfect competition, right? Remember, initially, we said that firms within this industry are price takers. And how, how does that even make sense when it comes to these diagrams? Firstly, there is what we call a market diagram. There is a market demand curve and there's a market supply curve where this market price is determined, right? We've been using five all the time, so let's leave it at five. And let's just say the market quantity demanded, it's 100, and the price is five. This five is determined by the interaction of demand and supply by all firms and all the buyers. So no individual firm has control over this set price. They simply adapt to it, if possible. The legend goes, Perfect competition industries start off in a state of profit. The It's nice, you're, you're making money, you're enjoying yourself, and persons see that you are making profit. Now, this market has no barriers to entry. More so, the product being sold is it's easy. We're all selling the same thing, which means you are going to have a lot of persons entering this market. What happens when a lot of persons enter the market? What happens to the market? Supply curve. What's going to happen then? In that case, once you have a lot of persons entering the market, the supply curve is going to shift outward to the right as they enter the market. But what happens to the market price in that case? The market price falls. Now, what they say in this case is that the market price falls to a point where some of the firms within the industry can survive. As you saw, according to the placement of your average cost curve, you may be making a profit, abnormal profit, supernormal profit. You may be making normal profit, which is more or less break even, or you may be making a loss. Some firms can survive at that, which means in the long run, some firms have to exit the industry. They have to exit the market. Once those firms exit the industry, what happens to the supply curve? The supply curve is going to shift again, but this time it's going to shift inward. Let's call that one S3. S3. So the gist of it is the markets, at least in the long run, the market adjust to a position where all firms within the industry are making normal profit, which means there is no incentive to exit or enter the industry because they make a normal profit. I don't want to go there and make normal profit, right? And if you enter, you're going to end up forcing someone to make a loss because you are impacting the market supply curve. So that's it. What you have are the three principles. You can use those to figure out almost everything with perfect competition as well as when you move on to other market structures. It's important to note that the long run equilibrium of the perfect competition is the position of normal profit where revenue is equal to your cost. That's the first diagram we looked at, all right? You need to keep in mind what the characteristics of this market structure, what they are. Perfect knowledge, many buyers, many sellers, no buyers to entry, etc. Keep that in mind. Keep the three guiding principles in mind and you will be fine here. Just don't remember the price that we see for them, that the price that they take is established by the market demand and supply curves. All right. And that's it from me here today. Hopefully I'll see you for our next market structure video. Until then, you good, buddy?